And now, you are there with Jerry Stewart. Hello, I'm Jerry Stewart. There is no doubt, no argument. We are in hard times. Now, these aren't the hardest times ever, but they are hard. There are fewer jobs, less money. Our nation's economy is uncertain and unstable. And all of these factors, these very real circumstances, are causing us to have doubts and fears and troubles. Many are asking, what do we do? What can we do? In a moment, you will know, because you are there. Hello, Jerry Stewart here. Stories are a powerful way to teach and a great way to be reminded of our own duties and responsibilities as American citizens. That's why I love to tell true stories of our American history to remind us all that we are the greatest nation in the world, yes, but we won't stay the greatest nation unless we all do our part. Want to hear some great true stories of America? How about 70 stories? For just $19.95 plus $5 shipping and handling, I will send you my 70 favorite stories. Order now and you'll also receive a second CD, Teach the Children Well. Ten stories to teach our children and remind us all what it means to be a God-honoring American. Just call my order line now at 817-995-4607 or order online at www.jerrystewartusa.com. The number again, 817-995-4607. Please call now. Perhaps the greatest communicator in the history of our nation was Thomas Jefferson. Interestingly enough, those who knew him said that he was a man of few words. In fact, Jefferson himself said that the biggest mistake a person could make was to say two words when they could have said what was needed with just one word. So when this great communicator, Thomas Jefferson, spoke, people knew that it was well thought out and worth hearing. In February of 1825, Thomas Jefferson, by then an old man of almost 80 years, was asked to compose a letter for a young boy who had been named after him, so that when the young boy was old enough to appreciate the letter, it would be given to him. The young boy's father asked Jefferson if he would make the letter words of practical advice so that the boy could learn from Jefferson's great wisdom. And it is said that this may have been some of the final words Thomas Jefferson wrote before his death. So they had to be good. This is some of what Thomas Jefferson's letter said. He said, this letter will to you be as one from the dead. The writer will be in the grave before you can weigh its counsel. Your excellent father has requested that I would address to you something which might possibly have a favorable influence on the course of life you have to run. And then Thomas Jefferson gave these eight steps to a good and meaningful and rich life. I will save his most important step, his first step listed for last. Number two, he said, reverence and cherish your parents. Number three, love your neighbors as yourself. Number four, love your country more than yourself. Number five, be just. Number six, be true. Number seven, murmur not at the ways of providence. In other words, don't complain. Now, each of these was sound advice for that young boy and certainly great advice for us today. But what was his number one advice? What did Thomas Jefferson consider to be the single most important thing to be done to best assure a good and meaningful and rich life? What did he consider to be the single most important thing to be done in our country to make our country a better nation? Number one, he said, adore God. Not just obey him. He said, adore him. So what must be our part in our nation, America, today? What must we do to help make and keep our great nation, America, great? Work hard, sure. Be responsible for ourselves and our families, absolutely. But first of all, above all other things, put God back in His rightful place as the true Father of our nation and adore Him. I'm Jerry Stewart, and now you know, because you are there.